Members of the U.S. Congress have approved a bill to raise the debt ceiling and reopen the government. They've been arguing for months over the debt ceiling and how to pay the nation's bills. They face the threat of a default. They reached an agreement just hours before the deadline. No doubt a relieved president, but he said this wasn't the end of the story. There's a lot of work ahead of us, including our need to earn back the trust of the American people that's been lost over the last few weeks. And we can begin to do that by addressing the real issues that they care about. The deal will fund the government until January the 15th and extend U.S. borrowing authority to February the 7th. It would also set up a panel of politicians to draw up a longer-term budget deal, one that President Obama hoped could be agreed upon more amicably. <laughs> Senate Democrat leader Harry Reid decided to celebrate the agreement rather than the differences. The, majority leader. the compromise we reached will provide our economy with the stability it desperately needs. It's never easy for two sides to reach consensus. It's really hard, sometimes harder than others. This time was really hard. But after weeks spent facing off across a partisan divide that often seemed too wide to cross, our country came to the brink of a disaster. But in the end, political adversaries set aside their differences and disagreements to prevent that disaster. But the thorny issue of Obamacare still rankles with the Republicans and they vowed to try to repeal the law. It marks a defeat for Republicans who had demanded that Obama's signature health care reforms be delayed by a year in return for the passage of a budget bill. Obama refused to negotiate. This is a terrible deal. This deal embodies everything about the Washington establishment that frustrates the American people. This deal kicks the can down the road. It allows yet more debt more deficits, more spending. The deal will put an end to Washington's most serious budget crisis in 17 years. But with more negotiations due in February, the budget battles are far from over. We had a good rally right after the deal was signed in the Senate, and then that carried over with the House uh, passage hollow, but that quickly faded in the first 90 minutes of trading here in the Asian market. Let's, let's take a look, and you'll see that we're off for the highs from the day. The Nikkei index was up better than 1% on the session. You can see now it's bounced back a little bit, up 8 tenths of 1%. But look at Hong Kong, Shanghai, and Seoul. Seoul up just over a, a quarter of uh, 1%. The other kind of trend here, the dollar-based assets, oil and gold and the dollar itself rallied after the deal was done. But again, Hala, this quickly faded away. So what does it tell us? Number one, nobody really thought that the U.S. congressional vote would never happen. They thought that the deal would get done. Number two, they don't have a lot of confidence going forward that this will be solved. So we're back in the same position mid-January through February. Can they get a deal done? And, and number three, we're in a region right now with great assets into U.S. Treasury bonds. Uh, the Chinese hold about one and a quarter trillion dollars. The Japanese, one point one trillion dollars. And the question marks being raised, do the U.S. lawmakers really care whether we hold these assets or not? Uh -huh. The U.S. is the reserve currency. Uh, but uh, will it be able to hold on to that? I'm not talking about four or five years, but is this a longer-term trend where the U.S. doesn't really care whether it gets that investment or not? We already see the Chinese buying more European bonds to balance out their portfolio. So things are moving again, at least for a while, which is a huge relief for the American people who could only watch as the chaos played out on Capitol Hill. But it's not impossible that in a couple of months' time, America could once again find itself at a standstill. I hope that we won't be doing this again in January, but um, I wouldn't be shocked. And I'm not happy because it's going to come up again. And I think this is no way to run a country. On the other side of that country, disdain for politicians is similarly rife. In Barstow, California, there's concern over what sort of message this sends to the world. Polls show the majority of Americans want every member of Congress fired. But even if their collective memories hold, along with their anger, that is a message they won't be able to send until the 2014 elections. 
But first, the politicians have another chance to try and find a long-term budget solution that they haven't been able to reach during the last five government-created crises. If not, in three months, it's possible the American people will be back here again, from the outside looking in on Capitol Hill, not liking what they see, but not able to do much about it.